All right, how's it going, y'all? So today I have in front of me right here one of Unify's new Wi-Fi 6 Pro Ceiling Access Points. And so this right here is the Unify Wi-Fi 6 Access Point Pro, which is their Pro version of the Access Point. They have kind of diverged from the normal model of consumer and pro and decided to throw a third version in there where there's consumer, pro, and enterprise. But this is the pro version. So that means that it is Wi-Fi 6 4x4 antennas, but it does not have the same range as the long range Wi-Fi 6 access point, but it is designed for a larger amount of clients. And the reason I bought it was actually because I wanted to have 4x4 MIMO antennas and I wanted to be able to do a lot of testing with that without going through, and I didn't need the range of the long range version, and so I went through and buy it. Am I going to be able to use this Wi-Fi access point to its full potential in my house? No, but is it going to look nice in my ceiling? Yes. Now, they also went through recently and unveiled their full lineup for Unify Wi-Fi 6 access points, which is something that everybody's been trying to figure out, myself included, on what they are planning on doing. And so if we look right here, we can actually see that they have put in their store four out of the seven total Wi-Fi 6 access points that they are going to be unveiling. So there are three basically ceiling mounted ones that are on here. There is a fourth one that is the enterprise version, and that's going to actually be Wi-Fi 6E. So Wi-Fi 6E is actually going to probably be a bigger jump in terms of single user performance than the jump from Wi-Fi 5 to Wi-Fi 6. That's because Wi-Fi 6E unveils six gigahertz range. And so six gigahertz is a continuation of the five gigahertz trend where the higher frequencies you've got, which is what the gigahertz means, it's actually at a frequency of six gigahertz. And so the difference between a five gigahertz spectrum to the six gigahertz spectrum offered by Wi-Fi 6E is pretty similar to the same transition from the 2.4 gigahertz spectrum that we were on way back in old Wi-Fi to the five gigahertz spectrum. So you're going to get much less wall penetration because everything's going to be absorbing those waves a lot more. But because of that, and also the fact that there's a larger spectrum, you're going to get way faster data rates because the faster your frequency is, the more data you can put in there effectively. But it does not penetrate through objects as easily and it also is going to be absorbed by the atmosphere more. And so you are just gonna get less transmission. But that's actually a good thing. So if you are going to be just layering your entire house with Wi-Fi access points, that means that you can have every single room have its own access point, and the Wi-Fi will not be seeping out of the walls of the room nearly as easily. It also means that you're gonna get a lot less interference with your neighbors. And so it's very unlikely that your neighbor's Wi-Fi will go through and go through their walls and your walls and actually start causing interference with your own network. And so it's kind of your, your king of your own domain in that sense. But it's really going to be only for people who are going all out because it's not like you can just put one Wi-Fi access point in the center of your house and expect six gigahertz coverage to the entire thing. But that Wi-Fi 6 enterprise model that Unify has unveiled is actually finally going to be the two and a half gigabit Wi-Fi access point. And so everybody saw this coming. With the enterprise switches coming out, they do have that 2.5 gigahertz PoE plus port. And so it's obviously got to have a Wi-Fi access point with 2.5 gigahertz connectivity. And I do think that Wi-Fi 6E might actually be able to use more than one gigabit for actual users. So obviously if you have a bunch of people all going through and connecting to one Wi-Fi access point, it becomes a lot easier to saturate a one gigabit connection. But for just a single user, with even with Wi-Fi 6, it's really hard to saturate a one gigabit connection without having false data, I'll go ahead and say. Now you can saturate a one gigabit connection with Wi-Fi 6, but you're going to be kind of falsifying data because you're going to have to do a lot of tuning parameters that are only good for this speed test, but are going to give you actually worse Wi-Fi performance overall if you actually tried to use it as your normal Wi-Fi daily. So to be able to really saturate the one gigabit connection on most Wi-Fi access points with just regular Wi-Fi 5 or Wi-Fi 6, effectively what, what you do is you bond all of the spectrum together into a big ol' 160 megahertz section. 
And so that gives you the ability to actually get those crazy fast speeds. But by doing that, you are now causing so much more noise. And so if you are not right next to your Wi-Fi access point for this test, your signal is going to be so much worse for the rest of the house. And so by setting up speed tests like that, yeah, you can see crazy numbers, but those numbers are completely meaningless because if you kept that settings required to use those, you would have terrible experience, which the whole point of Wi-Fi is to get good experience throughout the rest of your house, right? And so Wi-Fi 6E, because that ultra low penetration might actually be able to really get those values and still have good Wi-Fi for the entire house. So that's actually what I'm really excited about. And I will at one point be buying a Wi-Fi 6E access point. I just don't know if I should spend the money right now. But I bought this right here and it is a chunker. I'm definitely gonna go through and have a separate review of this thing, but it is a lot heavier than the other Wi-Fi access point that I've seen. So now if we continue on with the rest of the Wi-Fi 6 lineup that Unify has unveiled, is they've got your Wi-Fi 6 mesh. And so this one right here is the continuation of the old Wi-Fi Flex that were actually pretty awesome. So I've got one and I liked it a lot because it was just a easy to use access point. You could just stick it pretty much wherever. It was really slim, it looked good. And so you really didn't matter where it is. You could put it on a kitchen counter, it wouldn't be a big deal. And so now they've gone through and changed that from being called the flex to now being called the mesh. And so they're setting these up as the ability to use mesh. So mesh is effectively where if you don't have an uplink signal, so say you don't have the ability to wire the actual access point, you can still go through and set these up. Funny enough, you actually still have to plug them into RJ45 jack for PoE power, but you can set them up and they'll actually go through and be Wi-Fi extenders. You will be getting worse performance than you would if you had them actually all wired, but you'll actually be able to extend the Wi-Fi range where sometimes it's just not feasible to actually go through and have everything wired back. They also unveiled that they'll be updating the Wi-Fi point in wall to a Wi-Fi 6 version. And so these are the great ones that are designed for hospitality or schools or anything like that, where you can go through, it's just like a power outlet, except you plug in a ethernet jack in the back with PoE power, it's a Wi-Fi access point, and it's also got four ethernet ports you can plug into. And one of them is also a PoE pass-through, which is awesome. And so these are designed to broadcast Wi-Fi from a wall outward, and so they're really good if you want to section off specific rooms in a hotel to all have their own access points because it's very directional. If you're going to be getting in the ceiling mounted ones like this right here, you need to be mounting them on the ceiling facing down. Otherwise, they're just not going to work well for you and it'd be way better to buy the, well now it's going to be called the Wi-Fi 6 mesh because that is broadcasting in all directions. The ceiling mounted ones are designed with antenna patterns that just broadcast down and out. And so they're really good when mounted on the ceiling, but if you mount them anywhere else, you're going to have a very weird Wi-Fi setup and you're gonna run into a lot of issues. So make sure only buy these guys if you're mounting them on the ceiling. And then finally, they're also updating what's called now the Access Point Beacon HD to Wi-Fi 6, and that is a pure extender. So you just plug it into a power outlet and it acts as a mesh extender. And so the other thing I found fascinating about this is all these new Wi-Fi 6 access points go through and now also offer Bluetooth. And so they are really teeing themselves up to become a IoT company, honestly. So by having all of their access points also be able to communicate over Bluetooth, it means they'll be able to have all of their smart accessories that they want, communicate not over Wi-Fi, which is very power hungry, but be able to communicate over low energy Bluetooth. And so that means you can have door locks and all these things that run off of battery power, having very long lives because they do not have to use Wi-Fi. Instead, they can use ultra efficient Bluetooth to communicate with everything. And so they're being very intelligent by pretty much just putting in Bluetooth into all their different access points. And I think over the next couple of years, we're going to see them really pushing to try to build themselves into the market. Already they've got a pretty good setup for it because to run Unify gear, you already need a hosting interface. So you've already got to manage it somewhere. And so they can just start building off of that very easily. 
And so I think that that is the reason they're putting Bluetooth into all these things is to start building effectively kind of mesh Bluetooth networks that it's not actually mesh, but could go through and communicate with all their little IoT devices. Because by the time these things start to come out, most people who are really into the Unify system will already have access points that are acting as these transceivers that already have wired gigabit uplinks. And so they're doing a very smart thing there. So I'm really interested to see what they come out with in the future. All right, so now at the end of this video, I did wanna talk about now that all these Wi-Fi 6 access points are finally coming out, they've built out their range and now you understand what they're gonna be selling, should you go through and upgrade whatever your setup is from Wi-Fi 5 access points to Wi-Fi 6 access points? Because obviously Wi-Fi 6, new, latest and greatest and shiny, right? Well, it's yes and no. I mean, if you are somebody who's got a ton of money and just like, I want the latest and greatest at all times, go for it, spend the money, fuel the economy, all that good stuff. But if you're somebody who's just honestly asking yourself, price performance, are these new access points going to be worth it for me to upgrade to? If you're a home user, maybe not. So Wi-Fi 6, the biggest upgrades from Wi-Fi 5 to Wi-Fi 6 are really things that are going to be awesome for massive crowded environments. Wi-Fi 6 is designed to have so many more clients all being able to effectively communicate with one access point versus what Wi-Fi 5 was able to do. And so if you're at sporting events and just massive crowds of people, Wi-Fi 6 is going to be a huge game changer for that because of things like intelligent scheduling and the access points can just communicate with objects a lot more easily without burning through resources by waiting for everything to send at specific times. And so that's where Wi-Fi 6 is really gonna be a huge upgrade. But for consumers with just a few devices at their house, Wi-Fi 6 is going to be, yes, a speed bump in some ways, but it's not going to be the massive performance increase that everybody saw going from 2.4 gigahertz to five gigahertz. It's not gonna be that big of a jump. Now, if your device is all supported, you can get better power usage and things like that. But what I would recommend for a lot of people is, if you just upgraded all your stuff to Wi-Fi 5, it's not a bad idea to kind of skip the Wi-Fi 6 for now and wait for Wi-Fi 6E. Because I think that Wi-Fi 6E for consumer performance is going to be a much larger game changer whenever devices start actually supporting it. Because the six gigahertz spectrum can just give you so much more performance and really get you fast speeds, way more than just this jump from Wi-Fi 5 to Wi-Fi 6. And so if it were me and I already had a deployment that I was satisfied with, I would go through and just wait for Wi-Fi 6E to really take hold and then be able to upgrade my gear because I think that will give you your best bang for a buck. Now, if you are building on deployment and you're on a tight budget, one thing you might wanna look at is go through and check eBay. So a lot of people right now are gonna be going through and selling off their old Wi-Fi 5 gear for new Wi-Fi 6 gear. And so if you're on a tight budget and you only have a few hundred dollars to spend on Wi-Fi, then buying three used Wi-Fi 5 access points off of eBay is going to give you so much more performance than you would if you just had a single access point in the center of your house, even if it was like the Wi-Fi 6 long range version. And so it's gonna be way better to have more access points, even if they're on Wi-Fi 5 and used, than it would be if you go through and spend all the money getting the fancy new stuff. So if you're on a tight budget, definitely check eBay, because I bet right now a lot of people are gonna be selling that gear, people who love being on the newest end of the spectrum, and that is where you can really save some money generally. All right, well, that's gonna be it for this quick overview. I'm just really excited they finally flush out their lineup, and I'm really interested to see what Wi-Fi 6E speeds will actually be with real-world deployments that are actually going to work for real users. Go ahead and leave any other unified tutorials like to be making in the comments below, and have a good one. Bye.